There are a number of developing countries who really have um, increased uh, their allocation to education, um, especially over the last 10 years, and, and, and are really at the forefront in the world of supplying qu quite a bit of resources to education. And that isn't even sufficient, frankly, for, all the, to, for reaching all their kids. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, education in developing countries, a global priority. There's a learning crisis in developing countries where children are either poorly educated or denied an education altogether. Some countries invest more in their armed forces than they do in their classrooms, even though additional schooling can lead to higher incomes, benefiting the child and the overall economy. Education is a fundamental human right and is the best tool for tackling poverty and other issues, notes senior fellow Rebecca Winthrop. Rebecca, you write that there is a learning crisis that is affecting the developing world. And this crisis, you say, has three distinct dimensions. If we look at what are the actual problems of the learning crisis, and this is really across the developing world, um, a lot of kids are getting into school, but there is still a, cr a problem of a number of very marginalized groups who are not. And so they're not, there's groups who are still not getting learning opportunities or opportunities to learn. And these, by and large, are kids who live in conflict countries. Half of the kids who are out of school in the world today live in countries affected by armed conflict and war and violence. Um, and these are kids who are, are rural, who are very poor, and oftentimes are girls. All right, so while many children are in school, the education they're getting is subpar. And you say this is especially evident in their reading skills. Hundreds of millions of kids in school in the developing world today, about estimates are that there's about 200 million children who are really struggling to even learn the most foundational skill, which is to read. For example, there's incredible data, shocking data, showing that, uh, for example, in Uganda, the African country of Uganda, kids who are at grade seven, so they've finished primary school, they're in you know, lower secondary school, um, can barely read at a grade two level. Almost a quarter of kids in Uganda at grade seven can barely read at a grade two level. This goes around the continent of Africa, in Latin America, in Asia. So kids are not learning foundational skills. And then the third dimension is that many of these children are not getting educations that will prepare them for the jobs of today and tomorrow. The third dimension of the learning crisis is really for those kids who who actually end, end up being able to master foundational skills, progress on to higher <coughs> education such as secondary school, they are not learning the relevant skills they need um, for their own lives and also for jobs and job opportunities. They're um, being trained in, in what really is a, a, an old way of doing education that was more suited to a colonial era that trains government bureaucrats, a few of them. Um, and in fact, there's, that's not where the job growth is. The job growth is in private sector enterprise, and you need critical thinking, teamwork, all sorts of um, transferable skills that they're not acquiring. And what about educating girls in the developing world? Is there a barrier to this in some countries? There's very high demand for education. Um, it's just that there's a range of pressures on the family, and girls get the last straw. So for example, if families who are very, very poor, one coping mechanism that they have is to marry their girls off. That gives them a little bit of resources, it frees up some burdens. That's a strategy that many families who are des desperately poor choose. And it's n frankly less for lack of interest, I think, oftentimes, of families to offer all their children an education and more just a range of coping mechanisms that leave girls girls at the bottom. And in the face of these findings, there's still a great number of countries that spend more on their military than they do on their classrooms. Developing countries um, face a huge number of challenges, one of which you may expect and we hear a lot about, which is resources. Um, there are some developing countries who don't spend nearly enough on uh, education as they should, who spend a great deal more on other things like the military and security and a range of other sectors. Um, and you know, there's no hard and fast rule, 
But we do see that if, if a country puts around 4% of its GDP towards education, uh, that those are the countries that are quite successful. Um, and so that's an important target. And what about conflict countries where wars can rage for decades? Nowhere else is it so imperative that the next generation, who's going to be the future leaders of these countries, gets a really solid base um, in good uh, literacy, numeracy, critical thinking, and life and labor skills. Because that really is the long-term sustainable path out of poverty and destitution for these countries, which certainly exacerbates the political conflicts that go on. So what's the benefit here for the U.S.? How does educating children in the developing world directly impact the USA? There's lots of good uh, evidence to show that folks in the developing world, the more educated those populations are, the greater demand they have for American, for example, if you want to use the U.S. as the example, American goods and services, more people buy iPods uh, around the world, et cetera, et cetera. So it actually is, is directly helpful for our own economy. It's also very helpful to try to tackle some of the global challenges that we need everybody in the world to tackle. Um, and that includes um, uh, preventing uh, diseases that flow across borders. Uh, that includes um, protecting our environment, which knows no sort of artificial borders that we have on our maps. Um, it also includes things like security. Um, things like violent extremism uh, have been shown um, to, you know, be harder to take root in, in countries where there's a great deal of opportunity, education being one of those opportunities. So what's the best course of action for addressing this learning crisis? What countries need to do is take this idea of uh, learning as the end goal rather than access as the end goal, which a lot of countries have, have been doing, seriously, and change the way they use their resources and invest in early childhood and gaining sort of foundational uh, literacy and numeracy skills and transitioning to relevant uh, secondary education with relevant curriculum. Those things, just with existing resources, uh, would make a big difference. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.